Right, so this is the third and final part of our TV Begun project. I've secretly done a little bit of hacking on this at Noisebridge Hackerspace in between the last time we met and now. Um, if you don't remember, this is an NES Zapper controller, which is used in such games as Duck Hunt, and uh, it's an awesome, really hackable controller that's a great base for all kinds of hardware projects. And I've been um, assembling and modifying a TV Begone kit, which is this kit by Mitch Altman that turns off televisions in public places uh, to go into here. It's basically a universal off remote for TVs. Uh, and I've long wanted to embed one in one of these awesome controllers. So uh, the first video that we did went through disassembling this guy. It's actually pretty easy. You've just got uh, the weird little light thing uh, which is a light sensor and um, a couple of weights and a bunch of screws. Now what we've got in here is the TV Begun Be Gone itself, which uh, is a standard assembly of the little kit, which includes four transistors, which uh, control these four infrared LEDs of different types. And those are going to be all pointing out the barrel. On the kit itself, they have them all arranged in a straight line, uh, my guess is that that doesn't necessarily matter, like they're all next to each other. Uh, I should be able to just make sure they're pointing straight down the barrel and have that be, you know, a, a working solution. But we will actually be taking this into the field and checking this weekend, so stay tuned. Uh, except that, yeah, stay tuned, haha, -ha, televisions, whatever. <laughs> okay, uh, and then what we have is um, the switch. There's a button down here which I have replaced with connections to the uh, limit switch, the trigger controller on the gun itself, so that when this is pulled, it's going to connect and be like pushing the switch on there. Um, besides that, there's these two blue and white cables that you see coming in here, and that actually connects to the NES Zapper's original cable. And what I've done is put the battery pack at the other end of that cable. And I've also added a little switch for on and off, which isn't in the original kit. So this basically means that I'll be able to stick this end into a holster and look like a sweet video game character because it'll still have the cable on it. Um, and uh, just go out and very obviously have an obnoxious time. <laughs> uh, however, um, one of the interesting things about the NES Zapper is that originally it was all grey and they changed it to this orange color later on because they wanted to make it very obvious that this is a toy gun. And so uh, my original couple are dark grey and this one is the very clearly toy version so we're not going to get in any trouble hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Um, yeah, so what I've got to do now is basically stick it all back together and uh, yeah. I think both of the trigger locking screws are already on here. So let's... Getting this all back together is a little bit of a tight squeeze. I actually had to extend the capacitor. I've got pictures of this in the tutorial that I'm going to post in a minute. Um, and I'll post it underneath this video. But I had to take the capacitor, which you're supposed to lean down so it's flat on the board, I forgot to do that, so I've stuck a couple of extension wires onto it and uh, made it lay flat. And then still I had to make a few cuts into the actual case of the gun. The thing is that since it's got this cover on it, most of that is going to be covered up. And then I think on the top I'm going to put a label with the name of the TV, TV Begun. Uh, so that A, I'll be able to tell people what it is and tell them, go Google this, you know, uh, and B, it'll cover up any extra little cosmetic issues caused by fitting the circuit board into here. Um, yeah, cool. So let's try and jam this all back together, huh? <laughs> Trying to make sure that the LEDs all point the same way and that they don't short out each other. Uh, I cut out some of the plastic in the little rings on, in the barrel so that these cables would be able to fold up neatly inside and I basically trimmed down some of the plastic here to make it a little bit easier to fit the circuit board in. But that's about all the physical mods I've made to the case itself. This is a little bit difficult to fit back together, so bear with me. <laughs> Come on. Okay, cool.
Oh, you know, that wasn't so bad this time. Oh, go in there. <laughs> As you can see, it takes a little bit of wrangling. And I'm going to take out my multi-tool here and kind of jam some wires back in there. Uh, I'm using the file, which is not a not a pointy part of the multi-tool. <laughs> and I wish I had a couple extra hands right now. But let's see, let's get you back in there. Come on. There we go. Okay. Something else seems to be obstructing. <sighs> and it also just sort of should just snap into place also eventually once I get this properly aligned. Come on. There we go. I have no idea what that actual final little snapping noise was, but it did it at the last time too. <laughs> so uh, I guess it's, you know, all happy now. And as you can see, there's this little spot here that I trimmed out thinking it would help with the circuit board. And there's a spot here where I was trying to make the capacitor be happy. It's fine. We'll put a sticker over it. It'll be great. <laughs> That's what like your first time around is for, right? No, stay on there. Um, oh, that's right, there's one screw underneath here that I've got to put in. Okay, let's get that all set up. At the same time, there are a couple of these screw anchors that I've actually removed to uh, make it easier to fit everything together. However, they're non-essential. Why are you not? Oh, I've got to go through the other. Woo! Okay. Now these two into the grip. Can you tell it's been a while since I actually had this whole thing together? Uh, this has been a project of a few weeks, off and on. I'm really happy to have it finally sort of coming into one, one final project. Cool, is that actually attached? Great. We've got a little bit of construction going on, so if you can hear loud grinding noises, that's what's going on. I'm so excited to try this out this weekend. You have no idea. Um, I'm hoping that everyone in the U.S. had a fantastic Independence Day. Uh, I got to go out and mess around with some fireworks, which is always great in the most legal of fashions. <laughs> so good. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to stick this guy on. And this guy on the other side, there's these two that sort of sheathe it. Let's see, which way up? This way. Uh-oh, no, you stay together. <laughs> it helps if you talk to your project while you're assembling it. <laughs> What I'm doing here, the reason that I'm screwing to the left first, is that this is a plastic enclosure, and if you misthread the uh, the screw in the first place, you run the risk of stripping out your little socket. And so, um, what going to the left first enables you to do is sort of feel when the threads slide together. Your screw will sort of slip down into a notch like that, and um, then you know that it's sort of ready to be screwed in, and you're not going to be causing any problems by doing that. <sighs> this is really not wanting to go together. Come on. It would be easier if I'm not just like looking at the camera while I do this. Come on. There we are. And I can still tell that it's not totally happy with me for having this huge circuit board in there, but it's going to have to deal. Whoa. <laughs> you 
you got to be a little bit authoritarian with your projects. Haha. -ha. Cool. And then over time you can work together to make the world a better place, right? <laughs> okay, so um, that's those assembled. Cool. And I've got two more to put in. And these are two little flathead screws. And they go here in the barrel. And since I don't have that tiny of a screwdriver, what I'm going to do is use the one on my multi-tool which is this fantastic little Leatherman squirt. It's like my favorite thing in the world. Ours uh, we got from an Intel hackathon. If you're not aware, we ran these hardware hackathons back in 2015. So I could have met some of you on the road. Uh, we bought a DeLorean and it was the Hack to the Future tour. That was pretty much the biggest hardware hacking platform that I've used. The thing came with this incredible manual that uh, showed you all the electrical systems and how to fix them and common faults and how to detect them and things like that. It was fantastic. And the whole thing, you know, it ran on no software. It um, had this beautiful fold-out poster with the entire electronic diagram of the car, which the simple fact that you could fit it on a single poster was incredible. And it was just a work of art. And I'm sad to say that we had to sell the DeLorean Unfortunately, it's much better as a conversation piece than as an actual car. <laughs> but um, if I could bring that back for you for a Throwback Thursday project, I totally would. I totally would. And people actually did hack it, you know. People um, took the ignition system and made it so it would remotely start on, a, um, on an Intel Edison and things like that. So now, cool. Our trigger works. Our gun seems pretty happy, um, and right now the batteries are off, but you know, I should put a little indicator here to show, you can kind of tell which way the switch is connected because uh, you can see the little legs, there's three legs on here, um, the middle one is the one connected to the actual power source, uh, the batteries here, uh, and the side one goes to the gun. The thing is that when the switch is over here, these two legs are connected. That leg over there is not connected to anything. The one on this side is connected to the gun. So when I switch, slide the switch over here, it turns on. Uh, I have no way of seeing that, actually, except maybe if I peek into the circuit board here. Can I see like an indicator light? That'd be really nice. They do have one on there that tells you um, when it's got power. It does a little blinky thing but I'm not seeing it. Anyway, uh, we'll take this out for a spin this weekend, and uh, I will show you what the results are. Hopefully it'll end up being really awesome. But that is our TV Begun project. So excited to have it finally assembled, and maybe eventually I'll 3D print a little case for this or something. Uh, and we'll keep you updated. Watch out for the tutorial, which is coming out later today, and I'll post it underneath this video. Thanks for watching.